Hey, welcome to our scene on the rabies virus. In this scene, we're going to talk about the characteristics of the virus, how it infects the body, and then we're going to talk about treatment at the end. So let's begin. So you might have noticed that there were all these scary animals over here. Well, actually one in particular, and that's to make this scene most memorable. Now the good news is that there are no people getting hurt in this scene, as this is an anatomy lab over here. And the scary dog over here was actually going for an anatomy model of a person. This makes the scene less gory. But anyway, we notice these animals over here. We notice the bat, the fox, the raccoon, the skunk, and the scary dog. These are all animals which can carry the rabies virus. For most animals, it travels through their saliva. With respect to the bat, the virus can mainly be transmitted through the air from their bat caves. But anyway, in this scene, they escaped from the zoo. Here's the TV screen talking about how the animals escaped from the zoo. I don't know why there's a TV screen in this anatomy lab. But anyway, these scary animals escaped from the zoo. We note over here that there's this floating creature here of some sort. Quite scary indeed. This is what the rabies virus kind of looks like. I mean, if we leave out the scary face, we notice that it has a bullet-shaped envelope around it. We notice the glycoprotein spikes that it has all over its surface. Inside, we note the helical capsid, as well as the random rhino over here, with the negative sign that he likes to balance on top of his nose. The rhino shows up in a videos of RNA viruses, rhino for RNA, and the negative sign reminds us that it is negative sense, that the rabies virus is negative sense, that it first has to convert its genome to mRNA in order for it to be transcribed. Okay, now that we've spoken about the structure, let's talk about how it infects the body. So again, we have this anatomy lab over here. And next to the man who was getting bitten, we have this arm over here. Let's take a look. So here is the nerve cell attaching to the muscle cell. Normally what happens is, for muscle contraction to happen, a nerve cell has to release acetylcholine, which attaches to nicotinic receptors on the muscle cells. What happens is that rabies virus enters and blocks the acetylcholine nicotinic receptors over here. So we can imagine our scary rabies guy coming over here and blocking these receptors. So here we have our scary rabies guy blocking the receptors on the muscle cells. This should help us remember how rabies virus works, that it first blocks the acetylcholine receptors on the muscle cells. The next thing we see in this anatomy lab is this spine, inside of course, which is the spinal cord. We see the rabies virus over here ascending the spinal cord. Here, the rabies virus travels to the CNS by migrating in a retrograde fashion through the dynein motors up the nerve axons which helps us remember that the next... So you can see that the incubation period of rabies virus depends on where the bite took place. If it took place in the foot, it will take the virus a longer amount of time to travel up the spinal cord, as opposed to if the bite was in the shoulder, the incubation period in the patient will be shorter. And then we get to the brain over here, which is on fire, which helps us remember the encephalitis, which may occur when rabies virus infects the brain. And we see the picture of the salivary glands on the wall of the anatomy lab, which helps us remember that after traveling from the brain, rabies virus can infect various structures, including the salivary glands, but also the eyes. Here is the lab teacher. Quite a cool lab teacher. Anyway, this lab teacher is going to help us remember the initial symptoms seen in a patient infected with rabies virus. This teacher has a random thermometer in his mouth, which helps us remember fever. We see that he is very tired from running away from the scary, from the scary animals, which helps us remember the malaise and the general feeling of sickness. We notice that the light over here is bothering him, which helps us remember the photobia. But again, these symptoms occur before the more debilitating symptoms which we mentioned before. If we take a look at, look at the wall over here, we notice a classic picture of the Negri bodies, which are viral inclusions seen in the brain, usually only after the patient has died. Let's just end off this scene with a word about treatment. So it's important to get treatment way before symptoms arise, as when symptoms arise, especially the major symptoms, the disease is usually fatal. But post-exposure treatment involves wound healing as well as passive immunity by giving the human rabies immunoglobulin as well as a killed vaccine in order to develop active immunity. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on rabies virus. Take care.